up everyone it's roger and james here from the disney kingdom podcast in this episode we're going to be talking all about all the marvel and star wars comic books that we've been reading um lately in the last couple of weeks i'm um, something that we do like to do because we do love to talk about comic books um so james what have you been reading lately uh so i've been sticking to two franchises for the most part i mean i'm, I'm reading outside of them but the mm-hmm. two i've really been focused on are uh star wars obviously i'm a huge star wars fan so i've been enjoying those and i've started rereading the darth vader series the current one from the beginning which i continue to be amazed by how much i enjoy that series yeah. um and then on top of that, I've been reading the X books, uh, X-Men Gold and Red and all that. And uh, we talked about X-23 last time. The second issue of that is out, and it's remaining really good, better than it any has any right to be. Yeah. And then uh, the surprise book for me, Mr. and Mrs. X, number one, which came out this past week. And I don't know. If, if, if you had told me that I would be – this into a book about rogue and gambit uh i don't think i would have believed you but it's it's really enjoyable yeah it kind of caught me by off guard because i kind of tried it on a whim because it was a number one and it was like okay it's like rogue and gambit you know it's like yeah i have don't, don't really followed them too much since really since the cartoon but it was like okay it's quite fun and you got all the different characters in there you got ice man you got nightcrawler mystique um i did love the the cliffhanger at the end but then them being on a on a spaceship and you know, there, there was a lot i was i laughed a lot and even my wife did turn uh, like she turned around and goes what are you reading because i was like chuckling a little quite a few times about it yeah th- there were some great bits in it like jubilee going absolutely crazy at the wedding like um trying to find the the something new and something old yeah. something borrowed and so and and the things that they were coming up with for that were great and then you know the whole like team gambit team rogue and Mm. uh, it was was just a really fun book and it caught me by surprise now i will admit that the basic premise of then immediately sending them off into space (laughs) to have an adventure with the shiar yeah uh guard is odd and i'm gonna wait to see what they are gonna do with that story but but yeah this one grabbed me and Mm. And the art was pretty good all around. There were a couple of uh, bits that maybe weren't up to, to snuff, but for the most part, it was it was just a really good looking book, a good, yeah. a well read book. Um, yeah, I, I'm even perfectly fine with the fact that they did the whole bait and switch with X Men Gold number thirty, the the wedding of Kitty Pride and, yeah. and uh, Colossus, which turned into the wedding of Rogue and Gambit instead. Yeah. It knows it was good. Um, better than the other X Men book, which I read recently, was the the designs one. The like. Oh right. So. Oh, I. I you're just, not the you're not the target audience for the no. grand designs books. Um, but let's talk about that real fast. The there was a series. Well, series is generous. It's two issues. Uh, called X Men Grand Design, came out I think either late last year, or early this year, and it's basically just a streamlining retelling of the early years of the X-Men kind of messing around with Mm -hmm. the timeline. Cause you know, back then the stuff that Stan Lee wrote was just off the cuff. There was no real continuity to it. And then Mm -hmm. the seventies, Chris Claremont came along and did the writing and he had to kind of make sense of it. And he introduced stuff uh, that didn't really make sense with the old timeline, but you kind of fudge it a little bit. And this was an effort, the the original miniseries was an effort to kind of streamline that, bring everything into a basic continuity that you could mm-hmm. reference. Uh, it's very much a series for longtime fans who kind of want to get re-experience yeah. the, those old stories. It, they did pitch it as like a, a primer for yeah. new readers, but it really isn't. It's, it, it's, it's, oh, it was... I was like reading, and I was like, I was started finding myself drifting because there was so much text to read, and it was jumping around all over the place, and it didn't. It was like, what's going on? I don't. And it's like, and it was, it was a very. I didn't enjoy reading it. I got to the end of it. I'm going, yeah, this isn't for me. This is, and I wouldn't recommend it to a new person because it's completely confusing. They yeah, were just it's... running through stuff so quickly, and it was jumping. It was like, well, what, what's going? What, what? And then it was moved on, and you were like, well, what? And yeah, it, it was a bit. That was a disappointment for me. 
it it really should be viewed as something for veteran readers to kind of get a handle on what the current official history of the X-Men is. Mm. And that's that's what the series is. Now if you if you do approach it from that point of view, if you are familiar with the 50 plus years of continuity, then it's it's actually a pretty good read. It's a, a nice little oh, I remember when that happened. Oh, I I see what they did there to make this work and all that, but um yeah, d- definitely not a casual reader book. It, it's if you're going to read it without knowing the history of the X Men, you need to have Wikipedia open yeah. uh, to reference what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it was that wasn't certainly wasn't a good one. Um, another one I read recently was the Amazing Spider Man. Um, we covered the last the um the first issue. Yeah, yeah the second issue um sees like Peter Parker in like college with Doc Connors and the Lizard, and suddenly they bring in like the Taskmaster and. That, I enjoyed that one. That was a fun little episode. It was kind of reminded me of, you know, that thing of Peter Parker's back at college. He's making some jokes. He's got some people that he's got to take care of. And it was fun. It was a nice... And it was, I actually thought it looked quite a smart um, issue as well. Yeah, I, I stopped on Amazing Spider-Man. I was kind of uh, eh on the first issue. Uh, I mean, I knew... As we talked about in the previous podcast that we did this on, I I knew what had to happen. It was very much a the the incoming writer wanted to set up things the way they wanted it to go. They they wanted to tell the stories that they were telling. Mary Jane is in it. <clears throat> Peter's back in college. He's fired from the bugle. Everybody hates him. Even the Avengers are like, you just go over in the corner. We don't want to yeah. talk to you because of how annoyed they were with him. And it was all very. Um, just string pulley obviously we want you in a particular position we're just going to do it all in one go yeah so i didn't actually kind of follow through with the second issue uh but but also bear in mind um as i've mentioned in the past spider-man i don't have the attachment to him that you do yeah um I did read him back in the day, and I remember the animated cartoon from the '90s, and you know, more recent ones like uh, uh, Spider-Man, uh, the very yeah. one that they canceled to make way for the new one, which isn't very good at all. But yeah, so I, I think Spider-Man fans will be happy with it once they get past that initial like, "Whoa, what are you doing?" here why is peter back in college and stuff yeah, it, like that it's just that thing it's like for me it's like that's that is spider-man so that's kind of for me it feels like this is what i tried reading a few i've tried reading quite a few issues when they did like reboot or sort of number ones and stuff over the last year and there was so much stuff going on and it's like this isn't spider-man it's like he's all over the place this is like the back to the, what it is and i i like it it's the ni- nice as well to, uh, for me like i have a spider-man in my monthly rotation you know that kind of thing of you know he's now this this is now one month of my monthly rotation books now yeah and and that's great because uh, spider-man does need to be in rotation especially with uh you know one and a half movies coming out this year i'm counting venom as a half movie yeah. it's not really a spider-man movie um and then the video game coming up yeah. in a month and a yeah. week or so so yeah this is a big year for spider-man and it's very important that they've got this book out there for people uh to right. enjoy yeah. and i'm glad it's hitting its target audience yeah. that's what Me. it needs to be. <laughs> yeah that you it's, basically it's exactly, so. that's kind of working quite well i'm um, just trying to think some of the other ones um did you read infinity war prime oh, infinity war. you know what i i should because I, I love the cosmic Marvel. I've been yeah. a fan of Guardians of the Galaxy since the 90s. I've been a fan of Nova uh, since the 90s. And and I, I, the Annihilation saga of the early mm. 2000s, which is what some of the movies drew their inspiration from. I, I love those books. But, you know, the Infinity Countdown series, the ones uh, mm. that was building up to Infinity Prime, I just got so... Yeah. uninterested in the entire thing you know well issue three they brought back uh drax the magical saxophone player and it's like i i don't care in the yeah. slightest about any yeah. of this story this the this issue was a little bit better in some ways of had it kind of is establishing obviously the main character going into this new se- series but i really feel like they are all these countdowns and primes and all the rest of it they're really making it way too complicated. It's like you should have just launched one prime and built up to the story and used this stuff that you needed to. It's like, 
I kind of read it. It's like there was some. There was a really great scene in it that was great. But there was so much I was. And there's a so I kind of gave up reading all the other primes that were going on because every time I jumped in, I'm like, I don't know what was going on. I don't know where it's going. Um, just give me one. You know, I just want one issue with it all in, and you follow it on week on week or fortnightly or monthly, and you can kind of keep up. This is just so this one was better than some of the previous ones, but it was still pretty odd. Yeah, and I mean, I'll probably go back and reread it when it comes out in the trade paperback and the order is just there for you so you can read it the way it's meant to be read. But I, there's too many mini series. There's too much going on. Yeah. And then the story itself is just too weird. So I haven't read this particular no. issue, um, so I can't comment on it directly. But the entire thing has just been kind of uh, – I Yeah. And as a, as a cosmic – Marvel fan, it does pain me to say that, but Do you I, know what the uh, thing that really gets me is obviously Infinity War, big movie, massive global success. Suddenly, Thanos is a mainstream character, the Infinity Gauntlet, all of this. And so they've tried to launch this like Infinity Wars comic book off it, but they're making it so complicated that anyone that maybe like me that doesn't really know exactly what's going on with all of this suddenly then jumps in and is completely confused and you're back out again because they are, this should have been treated as a let's get new people in and into this and carry on that trend of what's going on with the Infinity War and what it's all about. And this is just odd. They're just throwing, they're throwing too much around and I feel like they've missed their opportunity with this. Yeah, and... and- I don't know, just having all of the miniseries. We've seen in the past them do these miniseries. DC has, of course, done them as well. And it's always just confusing. Uh, so I don't know why they continue to do this. It's, it's annoying. Yeah, it's very, very odd. Um, like I said, it's kind of one of those weird things. Of I, think You can see what they're trying to do. They were trying to tie into it, but they were doing it not very well at the same time. And it's just a shame that they've done that one. i um, going to flick over now. Um it's that kind of thing. Um, the Life of Captain Marvel. Did we do that one? We did not talk about that one, but that was... I, honestly, I don't know what I was expecting out of this book, but I don't think this was it. So, yeah, it was it's not a, a... Yeah, it was an odd one. It, it's not a bad book. I, I don't think there was anything wrong with it, but it's, it's not the story that I want to be reading, especially in advance of her movie coming out next mm. year. You see, I kind of read it because I'm not really familiar with Captain Marvel. I see it popping up in comics that I read all the time, but I was never really, you know, it's, I never was never really too invested in her. So I don't really know much about her origin or anything like this. It's just I know that she's constantly popping up with Alpha Flight in other issues. They're constantly drip feeding it in. Right. And it's like, I kind of watched this like, okay, this is kind of, I felt like this book was like saying was like, for me, I was just like, this is say hello to a new reader. This is where we're going to do it. And I think they're redoing the bit of the origin and all the rest of it. I'm hoping I'm going to keep with it because I kind of want to know a little bit more about this character when the time the movie comes out. And a five, five piece series takes us right through to like October, November time. So yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. Um, the artwork was a bit fuzzy, but it's kind of all right. I, I didn't mind it, but I could have felt, like I said, it could have done something a bit better. I think it could, and I think this this is an underlying problem with Captain Marvel as a character, uh, is that it's actually very hard to pin down an identity for her or a background, um, because she's she's fairly generic when you get down to it. She's actually very much like Hal Jordan, Green Lantern in her mm-hmm. origin. You know, Air Force pilot gets uh, magic space powers, obviously without the ring, but mm-hmm. you know their power sets are very similar. Uh, and then once you get past that, there really isn't that much that identifies her, except that she has kind of been thrust into a leader role in more recent years. Now, if you really want to d- dive down the, the rabbit hole, she has a very complex continuity history, and none of it does her any favors. No. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that this, at least uh, maybe opening arc, will kind of clear away some of that chaff that built yeah. up because she, she's actually a fairly old character uh in terms of comic book history uh i think it was maybe 
Avengers number 200, and we're talking like Avenger, original Avengers run 200, <clears throat> which really screwed up her character hardcore. Uh, I might be getting the actual issue number wrong, but um, she basically was seduced by her son who impregnated her with himself. <laughs> and if that sounds weird, it's because it is, and it actually kind of irreparably damaged the character for something like three or four decades. Yeah. Um, and for a very long time, the most identifiable thing about Captain Marvel was that she was who uh, Rogue stole her powers from. Yeah. You know, for a very long time, the invulnerability and the flight and whatnot. So that just gives kind of gives you an idea of the convoluted, broken, destroyed backstory. So. To circle back around, I, mm. I do hope that this is kind of going to shuffle a lot of that off the board and just give us the straightforward, uh, this is what you need to know about Captain Marvel going into the movie. Um, but again, like I said, it's not, as someone who has been reading for a long time and who knows the character pretty well by this point, it's not the story I was necessarily no. looking for, but uh, yeah, you, you did remind me this is a very necessary story for them to have available to anybody who wants to come in and read more Captain Marvel stories when they see the movie next year. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting character, but kind of I'm willing to give this one a row a go because I don't I it feels like this is a good opportunity to kind of know more about the character because like I said she's always been a bit of a just a generic just, and I've got even their powers they never really even show her powers in most of the comic books. She just flies in, says something and flies off again. They don't quite often I've never really seen her do anything. And that's partly because her powers are kind of indefined. She's just flying super strong, super powered uh, blasts, etc. And if she's written properly, th- uh, she's got the same problem that Superman does, which is there are really not that many threats to her yeah. physically. So you've got to go <laughs> with threats, you know, mental, um, you know, psychological, that kind of thing. Which and also, it's like she doesn't. It doesn't feel like there's a villain, a, a foil, and all that kind of side of things. It right. really jumps out. I mean, honestly, if you were going to pick out a villain for Captain Marvel, your best bet is Rogue. But Rogue has been a hero for, you know, <laughs> we forty years book, herself. You know, we read a book about a wedding, and she's totally, it's, it's not exactly. Um, it's it's that kind of thing, and she's not really positioned like that, is it? Yeah. Now she does have her own villains rogues gallery, but yeah. there's nobody in it that you can go, Oh, that's Captain Marvel's villain. Now it's it's a bunch of people you really haven't heard of. And I think uh especially considering the movie and kind of a it was hinted at a little bit here in the book, is they're really gonna set up rather than having a single like red skull style villain, it's really yeah. just gonna be the scrolls, period. Yeah. The 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 scrolls will be her main antagonist. So rather than you know, one single identifiable villain, it will just be this entire Great. collective yeah. group. No, it's definitely definitely kind of one of the kind of the good ones. I mean, there's lots of stuff coming up um, in the in the week. So there's always new, you know, it's that kind of thing. There's a constant theme of new ones coming out and different things to jump into. But um, anything else you've been reading that you want to mention before we head off? Um, nothing that I want to mention. I think there's a lot of good books out there. Uh, Marvel's publishing some very good books. They're also publishing some not great books. Uh, but I think it's it's actually, you know, despite the market maybe kind of stabilizing and decreasing a bit year over year, it's a pretty good time to be a comics reader. There's a lot of very good stories out there. Yeah, it's kind of, it's, that kind of thing is, I think sometimes if like cherry, you know, everyone's going to just cherry pick what they like and find, you know, it's, the trouble is, is that kind of thing of trying to find what ones you like, keep into the main you know, keep them to main core titles, you know. You know, if you want a Spider Man and a Star Wars and a Avengers and an X Men comic, you know, that's kind of what I think most people do. I think they kind of, you know, you have a, a bit of a mix and you know, also you've got a, a weekly budget or a monthly budget to kind of pick stuff up. Yeah, and unless your budget is in the hundreds of dollars, I think it's very important to keep in mind that, you know, you don't have to read everything. No. Uh it's impossible. Stick with it. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, you'd have to have no job, but still have a steady income or a massive amount of uh, disposable cash. And 
you know, to stick to the stories you like. So even if you're listening to us and you go, man, X-23, I read that first one and I just did not like it. That's fine. There's a comic book out there for you. And heck, it doesn't even have to be superhero comics. They, no. it, once you get outside the Marvel and DC umbrella, literally every genre under the sun is represented in comics that are coming out right this moment, week to week. So there's mm. something out there for you. Definitely. Um, so go check them out. Go check out um, reviews over at thiskingdom.com. Um, also, James, where can they find you? You can find me heroiclegacy.com. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Laters.